Hey everyone, thanks for clicking. This is Rocky and I hope all is going well. Alright, so Suicide Squad is just around the corner and I want to talk about the characters in the movie and kind of where they come from in the comic. So kind of like my Deadpool character breakdown, this is going to be kind of a high level overview of these comic book characters that are going to be presented in the live action Suicide Squad movie. So let's go ahead and talk about the Suicide Squad itself, which is also referred to at times as Task Force X. The Suicide Squad has been around for quite some time in the comics. Originally, it was a group of non-powered government agents that took on pretty much hopeless missions. The more modern spin is the one known in which villains in the DC Universe are offered reduced prison time by taking on Black Book missions that could result in their death. This allowed for DC to explain why some villains just never stayed in jail and also allow them to showcase villains that in a lot of ways were more popular than the heroes they actually battled. DC had to ride the line between humanizing these villains so that readers would be invested in them and still show that they are in fact villains. This was sometimes alleviated by including heroes on the team to act kind of as a moral compass for the team in comparison to the villains that made up the team. In the movie it seems they are connected to the Metahuman Project mentioned by Lex in Batman v Superman that included information on Cyborg, Flash, and Aquaman as well as Wonder Woman. So it makes me wonder if the actual metahuman members of the squad will turn out to be falsely imprisoned due to being metahumans or if they are in fact villains. There are definitely a lot of angles they can go with the movie. Let's move on to the head of the Suicide Squad, Amanda Waller. Waller has been around for quite some time and has made an appearance in the comics, the animated universe, and the various television universes, including most recently in the Arrowverse. In all of these, she is seen as a brilliant and manipulative woman that will do whatever it takes to get a job done and is not opposed to going against her superiors for selfish reasons. She does not possess any powers. However, she exudes an aura of confidence that is not easily matched in the DC Universe. She is tied into the Agency, Checkmate, Argus, Suicide Squad, and Shadow Fighters. In all cases, she works closely with powered people, which helps her learn their weaknesses, which again she takes full advantage of. From what I have seen in the trailers, it looks like Viola Davis will do an amazing job with the character, but at this time, my favorite version of the live action character has to be from Arrow. Next in line, we have Rick Flagg. Now, I'm still not sure if they're basing this character on the original Rick Flagg or Rick Flagg Jr. I'm kind of hoping it is the latter, as they show a military leader talking with Waller in the previews, who is portrayed by Ted Whittall, who actually played Rick Flagg in Smallville. So part of me is hoping that he will be Rick Flagg, and Joel Kinman will portray his son. Well, that was a lot to get out, but I just think it will be a nice Easter egg for the fans. Either way, I think they will base the character more off Junior in the comics as he is the more modern take on the character. For the most part, he never really liked being part of the squad, but did eventually become loyal to everyone, including Waller. In the comics, he was placed on the team as its leader and basically military liaison to keep an eye on things. It seems the movie version will be pretty close to that as well, though perhaps he'll have a little bit stronger of a relationship with Waller or at least a connection with her previously to being put on the squad. I do have some worries about this character though, as I've never really been blown away by any of Kinnaman's performances, but maybe he just needs the right role and script. Alright, so next we have Tatsu, or she's better known as Katana, is a really interesting character as she is more or less considered a hero in the comics, but does have a pretty dark history. Her husband and children were killed by her brother-in-law, and as a result, her husband's soul was bonded to the sword she would later use called Soul Taker. Soul Taker is able to potentially absorb the souls of anyone that it kills. Katana is in turn able to communicate with those souls for knowledge, and in some cases has been seen to even resurrect these souls for a limited time. In other versions, the sword is considered a totem and grants Katana immortality as well. But at this time, it's not known how much of that's actually going to be introduced or carried over into the movie. 
Though in the trailers at one point it did appear she was either absorbing or using souls with her sword. At her core she is a pretty cold character and I think that will hold true for the movie and she is basically going to be Flag's kind of bodyguard. So technically she's a member of the squad but she's not really a prisoner. I'm just really interested to see how they handle the mystical properties of her sword or if they will just end up making her a metahuman. Time for Slipknot. From what I remember Slipknot was a pretty minor character in the comics. At some point in his past he developed a chemical that when applied to rope made it nearly unbreakable. He then took on a life of crime and hanging or choking people with ropes became his signature. The Suicide Squad recruited him and on his first mission he was given an explosive armband that was set to explode if he tried to run away beyond a certain distance from the rest of the team. Captain Boomerang convinced him that the explosives were a bluff and well they weren't. Slipknot ran and ended up losing an arm which was later replaced with a cybernetic one. In later reboot comics he had his arm torn off so I think there's a good chance he might lose an arm in this movie. Maybe. The movie seems to show him as more of a mercenary type character as he is seen using guns quite a bit but he does have some knots hanging from like his hair and his outfit so I'm not sure how close they're going to stay with the comic book origin as well as the attitude and uh, actions of the comic book character. Now one of the more visually stunning characters is going to be Killer Croc. I honestly don't remember Killer Croc much from the comics but do remember him from the animated Batman series. It seems the movie might be sticking close to his original comic origins as he was born with a disease that triggered basically regressive DNA traits similar to lizards as well as he was born with a metagene. These combined gave him a lizard-like appearance but still retained human features as opposed to the more modern take on the character that show him looking more like a crocodile. He has super strength, stamina, reflexes, regenerative abilities, as well as enhanced senses. Personality-wise, he was basically a psychopath as he killed his abusive aunt as a child and continued to kill as he made a name for himself in Gotham. I'm getting the feeling that the movie might try and put a more sympathetic approach on this character, which I would kind of like to see. Alright, everyone still listening out there? I know, there's a lot of characters to get through, but we're getting there. Next we have El Diablo. This is a character I'm very excited for as well as in a lot of ways he can be looked at as an anti-hero as he genuinely regrets harm he has caused in the past. Santana was a former gang leader that torched the house of a rival gang but it turns out there were innocent women and children killed as well so he basically gave himself up to the cops as he felt incredibly guilty over this. While in a hospital he has a chance encounter with a comatose Lazarus Lane who was a previous host for El Diablo. El Diablo is considered a spirit of vengeance but required a host similar to Marvel's Ghost Rider. Santana ends up entering the spirit world and becomes a new host and gains the ability to absorb and project intense flames as well as other supernatural abilities. These abilities require a change of form though for the movie I do not think they're actually going to show him basically transitioning from a human form to an El Diablo form. I think it's just going to be the standard one we've seen in the trailers. They are keeping true to the look of the tattoos. However, I'm not sure if we'll actually see them connected to the powers or not. As in the comics, they would slowly disappear as he used his flames. So like some other characters, the big question is will they connect his powers back to magic or mystical properties? Or will he be treated as only a metahuman? Either way, I'm expecting a great performance as Jay Hernandez typically does an amazing job on screen. Oh, Captain Boomerang, how the comic world hates you. Oh yes, good old Digger Harkness, a villain that even other villains hate. This former Boomerang performer was a product of a broken home and took on the identity of Captain Boomerang as a career criminal. He had a number of specialized boomerangs, not unlike Batman's Batarangs, and he was very, very skilled with them. In the comics, he had a massive problem with keeping his mouth shut and was considered incredibly racist, sexist, and just all around a complete D-bag. I mentioned earlier that he convinced Slipknot that Waller had not given them explosive armbands, and while another time he literally let another squad member get shot in the back, even though he could have saved her. He is a character that I love to hate, 
and I'm just wondering how far they will take it in the movie. As Warner Brothers is wanting to build a dark and gritty universe, this is definitely a character that could take advantage of that. The worry is that for the most part, Jai Courtney has delivered some relatively flat performances, but I think Harkness is a part he can really stretch his acting with, and I really hope he does. So yeah, look for this to be the guy that the audience hates. You know, unless they go a completely different route with the character. Alright, let's talk Deadshot. Floyd Lawton is an interesting character as he has tried being a hero a couple of times, but came to the realization that it was just not the life for him. Lawton in the comics had a mess of childhood that culminated in him attempting to kill his abusive father with a rifle, but ended up killing his older brother, who he basically worshipped. Later on in life, Lawton would in some ways look at Batman as his older brother, which is one of the main reasons he could never kill the Dark Knight. It looks like they are going with the more modern take on the character, as he appears to have a daughter as opposed to a son, and in this case they actually have a developed relationship. He is a natural leader due to his cool head and amazing tactical skills. While he does not have powers, he does boast some amazing marksman skills and claims to have never missed a target. He is also shown to have hand-to-hand -hand combat abilities nearly on par with Batman. His favorite weapons to use were his twin mounted wrist guns, but he's able to use pretty much any firearm with deadly accuracy. The main reason he is so good at what he does is he has an intense death wish and hopes to die in a big and showy way. Now like Killer Croc, I get the feeling in the movie they're going to present him as more of a sympathetic character and that his daughter will be his focus, similar to the comics but in a more tug on the heartstrings kind of way. Will Smith is capable of delivering some amazing performances, and I hope this will be another one. And now to talk about the crazy and sexy Harley Quinn. Now, the character has pretty much been a fan favorite since her first appearance on Batman the Animated Series. Yes, she was created specifically for the animated series, but was such a hit that they ended up adding her into the comics and gave her a full backstory. Harleen Quinzel was a psych intern at Arkham Asylum and became very interested and enamored in the mind of Joker. This eventually turned into obsession and she eventually snapped when she saw Joker return to Arkham after being beat up by Batman. She took on the name Harley Quinn and stood at the side of her pudding. Joker really enjoyed having a new toy to play with and proceeded to twist and break her mind more and more. Through it all, her love for him was always there, even the time she hated him. The more modern take on the character has bleached skin due to being dumped in a vat of acid by Joker, and it looks like we might get a scene similar to this in the movie itself. It does look like we will actually be getting quite a bit of her history in the movie, and like other characters, they're going to be putting her into a light, I think, to make the audience really kind of feel for her and basically want to see her succeed, see her win. While having no powers, her insanity and mind make her a formidable villain in the Batman-verse. Margot Robbie seems to be really invested in the character, and I'm excited to see both the comedic side of the character, as well as the more visceral side. Alright, so we talked a little bit about Harley, now let's talk about Joker. Oh, Joker, Joker, Joker. How I can make video upon video about this character. There still is not a clear-cut origin for him, but an accepted one is that he was a criminal that originally wore a red hood. Batman confronted him in a chemical plant, and he fell into a vat of acid which bleached his skin and pushed him into insanity. He is such an amazing villain though. In this movie, I think he will be more of a distraction for Harley and the squad, and not, and not necessarily seen as a main villain or main antagonist, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure how many flashbacks we'll get, but we should see the creation of Harley. I'm also hoping that we will see whatever he did that caused Harley to get imprisoned, as you know he threw her under the bus somehow. I doubt they're going to reveal much about Joker's origins, as they will probably save that for the Batman Santalo movies, or just avoid it altogether. I know there's still talk that he will turn out to be a former Robin, be it Jason Todd or Dick Grayson, but I just don't think they're going to go there. More than likely, he's just going to be Joker, but we'll have to see. Joker is a psychopath with genius intellect, and in some depictions, hand-to-hand -hand skills that exceed Batman's. 
In the comics, there are stories that show Joker as being immortal, though again, I don't think the movie's going to go there. I'm really looking forward to seeing his interactions with Harley and the rest of the squad. Oh, and let's not forget Batman. So, pretty much the character I'm most looking forward to see is Enchantress. Oh, the wonderful June Moon and her alternate personality. It's been pretty much confirmed that she will be a target or antagonist for the Suicide Squad movie, but that does not necessarily mean that she's going to be a villain. It's hard to say considering the squad is made up of criminals and Enchantress has been both a hero and villain in the comics. The origins of Enchantress revolve around June going to a party and being granted magical abilities by an entity in order to defeat a magical creature within this old castle. Later on, June learned that her Enchantress form was actually a completely separate entity that was capable of incredible evil. If June used too much magic, she would lose control and Enchantress in turn would fully take over. This was a pretty interesting aspect of her character for a while, but eventually she did have the evil Enchantress purged from her and was able to access magic without the fear of becoming evil. I am glad to see that it looks like we will get her origins in the movie and it seems they will be taking a lot of points from the comics. As far as powers go, Enchantress through magic can do almost anything and she always had a strong affinity to magic which allowed her to channel magic from and through others as well as tracking down other magical beings. She's definitely on the higher scale of power in DC's magic universe and that is something that has me very very excited. DC has such a rich and expansive magical universe and it is something I would love to see them showcase. It is completely possible that there might be an even bigger threat than Enchantress and she and the squad might end up teaming up by the end of the movie. Now aside from these characters we will also be seeing Batman and it seems he will have a short but significant part in the movie. Which makes sense as quite possibly he could have been the one that assisted in getting these villains arrested to begin with. For the most part in the comics the Suicide Squad was made up of Batman and Flash villains. What I'm really hoping is that we'll see some flashbacks of Batman and Joker around the time of the torture of Harleen and the creation of Harley. There are a number of other actors that have been linked to the movie, but at this time we don't know all the characters that might make an appearance. I know a lot of people are hoping to see hints at Deathstroke, as Slade Wilson has been a member of the Suicide Squad in the comics and is an amazing villain, as well as people are hoping to see potentially King Shark as well. Also, we do not exactly know who the real villain is as, again, I think Enchantress will end up being used by someone more powerful. Perhaps the Servant of Darkseid, as continuing to set him up would be pretty smart, but what I really hope for is to see a powerful magic villain. I really, really want to see DC take advantage of their magic universe, and this could be a fun movie to show that. Either way, Suicide Squad is one of my most anticipated movies of this year, and I cannot wait to see it. Alright everyone, like I said, this was just kind of a brief overview of these characters and basically how they are shown in the comics and that they are basically all based on comic book characters that were themselves also associated with the Suicide Squad in the comics. So like always, if you have any questions on any of these characters or anything in the Suicide Squad movie trailers itself, go and put those down in the comments below. Love to have some conversations with you guys on it. If you take a look at your screen, I've got a few links for you to follow there. And those same links will be provided in the interactive card on the top right of the screen, as well as down in the description below. And if while watching the videos you feel so inclined, definitely subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you on board. And if you have subscribed already, thank you so very much. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you've been enjoying the videos. With all that being said, have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!